Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my trip that I took recently to PEI with my family. I spent seven days there and we camped and it was great and I want to talk about all the books that I read because I brought like a lot with me. Um, I never read all the books that I bring. No one could read all the books that I brought but I did do quite well I think so I'm going to talk about what I read, what the trip is like, um, yeah, so basically it's just like a life update, but not really. Uh, so the first book I finished reading was Hilled. Uh, as you recall, I started this during my 24 hour readathon and it took me a lot longer to read than I anticipated. Um, I'm not going to review any of these books either, so this, I'm just going to tell you what I read and then there's going to be like a page count somewhere over here. So I finished Hilled. I was very excited about finishing it. It was an okay book. Um, and so that was fun. In the car on the way to the ferry, I read the first volume of Lumberjanes. Um, I thought that this was a really good book to read uh, for camping because uh, it's about girls at a camp. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I am getting the second volume to take with me on my trip at the end of this month, so in two weeks I'm going down to a different national park in my province, Kejimakujik National Park, and historic site for the long weekend. Uh, we're leaving on Friday and we're coming back on a Monday, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'll, I'll put a video up about that too, might be more vloggy, but this was super fun. I really enjoyed it. The characters are great. It is a middle school aimed graphic novel, so I wasn't really sure what to expect about that because the other ones that I read have been more for adults but it was a lot the same as the other ones it was lots of fun the characters were great there was lots of great character development and i can't wait to see where they go next so after that we spent a lot of time driving around the island uh so i was trying to read saga volume one in the car and i did manage to get through most of it in the car but unlike the highways in nova scotia where we have main highways mostly and then secondary roads uh, at least where we were in PEI, they seemed to be mostly secondary roads, so it was quite bumpy, which is making me feel a little carsick, so I read a bit of this, but not a whole lot, um, but it was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it as well. Graphic novels are great for reading in the car, because they don't have as much text, and I find that text is what really makes me feel carsick when I'm reading, um, because you're really trying to concentrate on this, whereas, like, if you're looking, uh, let me find a good example. Looking at something like this spread here, a lot of the stuff that you can get from from it is from the pictures, uh, so it doesn't give you the same sort of eye strain as reading text. At least not for me. I mean, everyone's different, so. But this was the third book that I finished, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, then I decided to pick up The Eye of the World. This was a really fun book to read, and it was a really fun way to read this book, too. Uh, recently, my dad let me the whole entire Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. I've been meaning to read this for years and years, and there's been many times when me and my father have talked about him lending me the books. It just never happened until right before we left. So I decided to bring the first one with me, and it was amazing. Uh, one of the really fun things about reading it was that my dad was there with me the whole time, too. Um, so he would ask me like what's going on in the book and things like that. I read some passages out loud to him. Uh, we had story time. It was a lot of fun. It was also, he's really good about not telling me things that I probably shouldn't want to know. So like when I asked him, it's like, well, is this character dead? He would just shrug. Um, I still want to know if the character is dead. So I really need to read the second one. I'll probably read it in September. Right now, kind of what I'm thinking about for this series is to read one book a month. But we'll see how that goes, and that'll be something that I'll really explore during my 2018 goals video. I think I might do two this year, one for lofty goals and one for actual goals, but that's coming to you in January, so it's a long way off. But I really did enjoy this book. I thought it was a lot of fun, but it's huge. It wasn't actually as long as I thought it was going to be. It's about uh, 650 pages-ish, 660. Um, but it looks so much bigger than that, but highly enjoyable. The, like font isn't too small, but the pages are really thick. So, Eye of the World. I was very excited about that. So, uh, I had hoped to finish that the day before that I read it so I could read more, but I didn't. So that was a little disappointing for me. Because we were doing a lot of driving around, uh, which I'm going to talk about more in a minute, but the things that we went to see, um, 
I didn't get to sit, spend as much time sitting in my campsite reading, which is what I normally do when I'm camping because I'm lazy and I want to be like relaxing. Normally I'd go for walks, but it, anyways. The next book I read was Audubon, On the Wings of the World. It is another graphic novel uh, about uh, James, John, John James Audubon? I think it's John Jack. Um, so he is American, but also French. He changed his name from Jean Jack to John James to fit in more in America. And uh, basically, he goes all across America to draw and research birds. Here's some of his own art. It's very famous. Birds of America is still one of the top ornithology books in the States, I do believe. Uh, and it's, it was an amazing accomplishment. He actually was working on a project on Birds of America with another ornithologist, uh, but his drawings were too flowery and not scientific enough, so no one in America liked them. His, his whole entire project didn't really catch on until he went to Europe, um, so it covers a lot of ground. It talks a lot about his family life, and it was really cool. He's definitely a figure I want to know more about now. Um, in this book also he meets Darwin, which is like, woo! We all know how much I love Darwin, so it kind of makes me wonder what it would be like to see a Voyage of the Beagle graphic novel. So if any of you do graphic novels and are looking for something cool to do, Voyage of the Beagle. Lots of fun. There'd be some great imagery there. Darwin eats a lot of turtles. So, but yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a lot of fun. The art was really great. Sometimes, like, some things happen. Uh, Jean-Jacques is very obsessive with birds. Um, so yeah. Then, after I finished that, I picked up Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett, and I read the first 120 pages of this. Uh, this was on the Saturday, so the day before we left, uh, and it was raining a lot, and it wasn't very nice out, so I just spent, I finished Wheel of Time, I read that, and I read this. Uh, it, yeah, and it was very cold too. Uh, if you're unaware, there was a hurricane that was going up past the coast of Nova Scotia, and that PEI is like, if Nova Scotia is here, PEI is like here. So there was definitely some weather that was associated with that. There was some days that we had some really high surf, um, and that was dangerous to go swimming. It was super dangerous, actually. Uh, when me and my family went walking a couple times, we could see riptides. Um, if you aren't familiar with riptides, that's good for you. <laughs> they're super dangerous. Um, but basically, when you see the waves coming in, uh, there'll be like a little channel where there's no waves, where um, the water is actually running back out to sea. So it's kind of similar to an undertow, if you're familiar with that. Only um, undertow is when, when a wave comes up, the water that had come up previously goes underneath of it. And uh, if a strong undertow happens, it can actually pull you under the water. And then uh, it has caused many drownings over the years. Anyways. Uh, the weather wasn't that great, which is good for reading, but bad for being warm because it was raining, it was hard to light a fire, and fire is warm. Anyways, that's that's ni neither here nor there. The final book I read was On the Way Home, and it was Paper Girls Volume 3. This is probably my favorite so far in the Paper Girls series. I loved it. The artwork, as always, was fantastic. And they talked about some different issues in this one than they had in the other ones. And I'm not going to say too much about it now because I'm going to do a full review of all of these books later. But uh, I highly recommend this series and I highly recommend this particular one. But yeah, so that was all that I read. So, further overview of the trip. We left here, my home in Halifax, on the Monday. And we went all the way up Nova Scotia to Picto where the ferry is. We stopped in and visited my grandparents, which was nice. And we took the ferry over to... PEI, um, which was good. We got on the first ferry, which is nice. Sometimes you have to wait, and the ferry takes 75 minutes to cross, um, so it's about an hour and a half between each wait. So if you're stuck, you have to wait for quite a while. Um, and it was fun. I haven't taken the ferry since I was a kid. I haven't been to PEI since I was a kid. It was a little disappointing coming off the ferry because I always think that PEI looks different than Nova Scotia, but it doesn't. Like it's it's the same. There's there's ocean there's trees, and there's farms. We drove all the way up to Stanhope, which is on the top part of the island. Uh, it would be helpful if I actually had a map, but I think we got rid of ours. It was completely destroyed. And uh, we set up camp, and that was good. It was a lot of fun. We read, we ate, 
slept. Then the next day, um, mom wanted to go up to an island with, uh, not an island, there's a lighthouse, um, Pembroke, I think. And so we went there, we saw the island, we saw the lighthouse, Duke got to swim, uh, dogs are not allowed on the national park beaches in, um, in Prince Edward Island because they're having a problem right now where their dunes are being destroyed. So they're really trying to limit the amount of activity around them. And despite the fact that they have many fences, I did see quite a few people on the dunes. So if you go to PEI, do not walk on the dunes. They're an endangered sort of species. Anyways, it's a very important part. So we had to take him somewhere else. He had a lot of fun. And then we went to the best place ever which is Fleece and Harmony. Uh, this is their brochure. Uh, so it has sheep on it. If you don't know, I am a huge knitter. I love knitting. I'm not a huge knitter. I love knitting a lot. I'm fairly good at knitting. So when we were waiting for the ferry, mom went and got some brochures and she was like, Colleen, do you want to go here? And I was like, it has sheep on the front. Of course I want to go there. So basically what Fleece and Harmony does is they started a sheep farm. So they have, I think it's 60 sheep and they do some lambing but what makes them kind of unique is that they are also using their wool to make products so uh, they bought a mill in January and they are starting to to make their own yarns from the wool from their sheeps um, a lot of sheep farms don't do this they'll like shear the sheep because that's really good for the sheep it's really important that you do shear them then they won't process it themselves and a lot of the people who are doing yarn processing in Canada are actually importing their wool from New Zealand and England and places like that because some sheep don't do well in our country or especially well in this region we're very damp so for example merino wool uh, is not something that they can make on the island because it's too damp there for the sheep so it's kind of unique that way they do all their own dyeing, all their own spinning, and they raise their sheep, so it's super cool. And I bought some stuff there. So I got, got these two yarns to make a hat, which I also bought the pattern for. This color is called Blueberry Preserve, and this is called Natural. Uh, as you can see, I've already started the hat. Um, this is just the very beginning, so this is ribbing. And then I started a pattern, a color work up here. And so that's one of the things that I bought. I also got this really pretty blue yarn. It's in the color Mermaid. I haven't decided what I'm going to make with this yet, uh, but I love the color, so I couldn't say no. As you know, I have a problem with yarn, and I have a problem with books. So I'm very excited to figure out what to make with these. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than something I would probably use for socks, but we'll see. Um, so I got that, and the other thing, that I got at, at Fleece and Harmony was some new stitch markers and they're really cute so I don't know if you can see it but like they look like little light bulbs they're little safety pins and they're all colored which is really great I've used plastic ones a lot and they just break and before these ones were not available in Canada so uh, this is really cool I really like them they come in rainbow colors and they fit up to a size 11 needle so that's super useful I don't normally use size 11. Um, I will link Fleece and Harmony down in the description box below. They sell these in their store and they also have links to the, where you can buy these. They also have all their yarn online as well as some other yarn products and um, some biographies on their sheep which is super cool. One of their sheep is named Prince Charming and he is adorable. So after we went there it was getting pretty late. Oh sorry I forgot to show you my pattern. Look at how pretty. Uh, this person that makes the pattern, Sand and Sea Creations, they'll also be linked in the description box below, uh, are on the island as well. They do photography and make knitting patterns, and they are also super cool. Um, but I really saw that I like this a lot. Uh, I thought it was really cute. So that's what I'm making right now. And that's all that we did on that day. Uh, so we went back to camping, the campground. We made some dinner hung out, stuff like that. We didn't really have good beach weather, which was a little disappointing. So I only made it to the beach once because the other days were too cold or too windy or raining. So that happened as well. But uh, 
the next day, we went out again. Mom, I can't remember where my mom wanted to go. She wanted to go somewhere, but we also went to this great yarn store called Knit Pickers. And I got these wooden knitting needles there. They are size, they're five millimeters. And they are made in River John, which is actually Nova Scotia, because no one in PEI makes knitting needles, apparently. And I also bought this uh, sheep's milk soap. It's in the natural, and it just, it smells so nice. So I'm really excited to use that. Uh, one thing that you should know about sheep milk soap, if you're interested in using it, it is a very soft soap. So they recommend not letting it sit in water. So I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I need to find a soap dish for it that will let it drain really well. But I'm super excited to use that. I think it's going to be really cool. One of the things that I really liked about the fiber community on the island was that it was really like all encompassing. Everyone was really into using local things and all Canadian made things, which I really love as a Canadian. I love buying things that are from here. I love reading books that are from here. Um, it's just the best. So uh, this community of fiber, fiber artists that I've met only a few members of, I think thought was really cool because they were all really focused on sourcing all of their things locally or as locally as they can. For example, uh, Knit Pickers sold some merino yarn, but that was from Calgary, I believe, because Calgary, they can have those sorts of sheep um, that make that wool where we can't have them here. Anyways, so that was what we did then. Thursday was just like a hangout day. Friday, my brother and his girlfriend came, so that was also another sort of hangout day and then a setup day. And Saturday, mom and dad and my brother and his girlfriend went out and I stayed back and I watched the dog. We had a good time. I balled the yarn. It was raining so I did that in the trailer. Then I read some and I took a nap. It was great. Uh, then we did some more hanging out, some more reading. And it was very cold that night so um, for the first time ever I have used the furnace in our trailer. Um, I spent many many years tenting so glamping isn't really my thing. I am very good at also doing the other side of camping but it was very nice to have a furnace, let me tell you. It just, it sucked all the dampness out of the trailer, which made it really nice and a lot easier to sleep, although I was wrapped in several blankets. Um, but yeah, so that was, and then we came home on the next day. We took the bridge home instead of the ferry. Another fun fact about the island is you don't have to pay to go on. You just have to pay to leave. So, woohoo, but yeah. That was my trip, so I hope you enjoyed this whole entire rambling explanation of what I've done, where I've been, all the things that I've read. Keep an eye out for the reviews that are coming out for those books that I finished. They should be up later this week, hopefully. Um, I work a lot this week, so it's going to be a little bit weird. I didn't know when I was going to have time to film even. Um, I work last night, work tonight, and I work tomorrow night. I have a day off. Then I work four nights in a row, then I have a day off, and then I work two nights in a row, and then we're leaving. So, um, hopefully, we'll get all these, like, queued up to go, and we'll do my monthly wrap-ups and things like that. So, lots of stuff is going on, as always. Um, but, yeah, I hope you enjoy the footage that I took at PEI. It's all super pretty. Uh, if you have any questions about the region or the Maritimes in general, uh, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Uh, if you are also a knitter and you you're super excited about yarn, let's talk about it. I'm super pumped for all the projects that I have on the go right now. Maybe if you want a video about that later, uh, let me know about that too, because I would love to talk about all the things that I have cast on right now, and all the things that I have in the works. Um, I'm a little bit behind on my knitting, but yeah, so until next time.